And why are y'all at the Occupied PHA movement? Because I believe PHA should be occupied. It should be overthrown, at least the CEO. And the land that they stole should be given back to the people they stole it from. If not given back to every individual, they need their money back. And the land should be having public housing on it for the citizens of the city. Okay, um, and can you tell us a little bit about your situation? So right now, I'm homeless. I live in a family shelter. It's the safest place I have to live right now, even though I have received a lot of unsafe a lot of unsafetyness living there. I've been attacked in my room at night by another resident. The food there is not always the healthiest. I think it's a part of why I'm sick right now. It's triggering my asthma. Um, right now, I go to school, you know, but I don't think that whether or not I was going to school and doing all these things to make it look like I was pushing myself up by the bootstraps that that would make me qualify even more for a housing voucher. I don't think I need to be waiting 10 years plus for a housing voucher to live in the community my ancestors paid for with their blood, sweat, and tears when black people weren't allowed to go past the college wall. So have, um, what's the process for you to get housing? What is that process looking like right now? So, that process, I've been in the shelter for seven months now, and last week they just went over a housing application, and they applied for me to live in um, permanent or transitional housing, whichever opportunity comes up within the city, and that process is at least six months long. So, if I do everything that is rightful according to the shelter, I just may be there for a year before I receive housing. That's if I wait for them. So the housing, will it be through uh, PHA? Or do um, I do not know. However, I do know through um, community meetings that our director at the shelter puts together that there, she tells us the city says there is no such thing as rapid rehousing right now or transitional housing. She is suggesting that we band together, collect our incomes and start collective housing that we try to find a way to live in a rooming situation or whatever because waiting for shelter here is not really viable. They have a system now where if you forget to sign in at night, even if they know you're there, you forget five times, they can put you out. They are creating small systems to get you out because there is a waiting list of over 350 people waiting to get into Woodstock Family Center where I live. That's just one shelter. So you said there's a waiting list of 350 people Plus, in that shelter. Right. right. And so the city is creating obstacles for people. So like every, everything is becoming more stringent to be able to maintain your shelter housing. So like, if you fail a room check and they happen to show off your room to a transitional housing agency, that counts against you. If you fail a room check and they write it down, that goes against you on your record. But what they don't understand is if, if, if for six months to one year, a family of two to three people and two, and there's only most likely one adult and the other two people are children, young children, that there's going to be damages to that one room. That people are suffering from PTSD. Children suffer from that. Anxiety, social anxiety, different mental and emotional issues. And they have to be in one room. So if a child writes on the wall or floor, that is a creative outlet right there. They're probably blessed that they got crayons. Not everyone can afford a television. And then the Wi-Fi is so crappy that people who can afford the television have to go out and buy their own private Wi-Fi. But I am not that into TV that much that I am willing to pay for private Wi-Fi so I can operate a smart television inside of a shelter. So I have to do things like keep my children creative, find different outlets so that we're not in that room all day. And I can hear it in the hallways and stuff. Parents are really angry at their kids because every single thing they do counts against them. And then it's like you let your children know that, you know, we really need to be on our P's and Q's because we want to get out of here.
And then the staff lets the parents know in front of the children, you can't discipline your children, not physically, not verbally, not anything, that they will be able to consider abuse. Now, I understand child abuse is wrong on all fields. However, to be able for a child to know that they cannot be disciplined, if they're having emotional behavioral problems and the parent has their own health problems, that's stress on this situation. They take your authority. When a child sees a parent have to ask for a carton of milk, they have to ask for sheets, they have to ask for anything that they need from another adult, and see them may be denied the right to wash laundry, that, that plays with the power dynamics in a family. And speaking on the laundry, I mean, like, they have laundry services there at the shelter. You, you could pay to do your laundry there and their washers and dryers, but they're always broken. And the staff there sometimes can be really unattentive. Some people try their best, but it's, it's, it's a lack of empathy there. There's a whole lot of apathy, and I'm... That's not really for it. It seems that that seems to be a plague in Philadelphia. Like it's all about money and not about people. It's Everything profit over it. people. Like that's like it really pisses me off, right? But what would you like to see come out of this protest? Um, and what would help you be stable in housing? So, I think that fifteen hundred dollars plus is not affordable rent to live on Twenty Second and Montgomery. Even if I was to receive a voucher that would drop my rent to $525, if I worked in this city with the minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, I would not be able to pay my rent on time, buy groceries without food stamps, be able to take care of health care needs, then finding out that there's lead poisoning in PHA housing, so now I got to deal with chronic health conditions at risk, being at risk for that, I would not be able to take care of my family and be able to live around my family peacefully. So what I want to see happen is that the minimum wage is raised to at least $15 an hour. What I want to see is that these parcels of land that have been taken, that housing is made on here for people, that people are given the tools and the education necessary to build their housing. This, at least this year, PHA received a grant from HUD. Ben Carson came down here to, with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Why aren't there people out here with hard hats and tools building? Why aren't there partnerships with trade schools where we have black electricians and black welders right down the street at a historical black trade school, Philadelphia Technician Institute? Why aren't we out here building partnerships with the right people? so that we can create our own on this land. I want reparations. I want policy change. I want Kelvin Jeremiah gone. And do we know of any um, housing executives that live in housing? Do we know of any? Housing executives that live in housing? Yeah. I am aware of it. I heard about it, but I, I don't have <laughs> It's not executive, but it's high-ranking employees. They had an article about it, and they make over a hundred thousand a year. Still living and they live in public housing. But they're denying other people from making nine thousand a month. Can I put that on camera? Yeah. You want to say that you? Want Back away, back away from, from that, that impossible. Some people say it's impossible. I see possibilities.